welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm going to try something out which is completely new to me, but I've been asked by a number of people, could I go through the whole process of going from there, from shooting a deer, I'm not going to show the shooting of the deer, there's going to be no high-fiving, no cheering, don't like that sort of filming. We're going to go from that field, across to the butcher's room where that animal will be skinned and then hung up in the chiller for a period of 10 days and then after that I will go and pick up the carcass, take it back to my house and then the whole process of going from there to the dinner table will take place. I hope you enjoy the film. Right, so this is just the way I do it. There's, there's, there's obviously a right and a wrong way to do it. This is, a, this is the way I tend to do it. Um, I'll harvest all the meat from this area um, for burgers um, and then stick that all, that will all go in a bowl. Cut that rib section away so the, the body lays flat. Then I can deal with the back legs and the two fillets that run down the back of the spine. Um, the front shoulders come off really easy. There's no bone, bone attached to that. I'll just slice it off with a knife. So I've got a big bowl here for all my off cuts of meat, which will go in there for mince. And then the rest of the pieces I shall stack up on the end of the island here. So everything's been wiped down nice and clean. Good sharp knife. So what I can do first is just remove this. All you've got to do is just pull that away. That will just pull off quite easily. And so you don't have to hack at it. And that's as simple as that comes off. So we're just going to lay that to one side up there. Same with the other side. So obviously there's a bit of blood damage there, but um, that can all be cleaned up. And that one's off as well. So as I said then, I will go about recovering all of the meat um, around, especially between the ribs, around this belly bit there that can go um, just in for the burger mix. So you'll see now, just inside here, there's a couple of nice fillets there that I'll take out while we're on the right, right way up. These will actually pull out with your fingers, but just nice to sort of tease them a bit with you, get them started. I think the thing with this is don't don't get afraid with it. Just take your time. Um, there's plenty of um, places on YouTube where you can watch it. Uh, people like Steve Rinella, Yanis Patelis that do it on Meat Eater. Um, that'd be a good point to to watch. Um, so, so they're interesting people to watch. They t do it nice and slowly. So what we got now, obviously the back of the deer is two haunches, uh, and then right down the centre of that spine is um, two really nice pieces of fillet. So but again, I say there's a right and a wrong way to do this. I, I tend to do it, sort of work out where the end of that joint is and then cut around there and then that will leave you with a nice sort of shape for that. So the back leg, it's called the H bone in here. You have to sort of find it where, obviously it's a ball joint like we have on our hip Find where that is and then just tease the meat around or the tendons around where that ball joint is. And it's there. So Makes you appreciate surgeons in the hospital when they're doing this all day long and then the per person that they're working on walks out at the end of the week. So that's just release one side of that joint. And then that'll go right down there. There's a flat piece of bone down there. I'll do the same one at the same time. Give it a bit of a 
give it a crack. Break that away. Just cut those little tendons away. And that's brought that off reasonably well, so I'm quite pleased with that. That's, that's all good solid meat. And what I should do then with the hacksaw is cut that that piece of fur off, so that's your Sunday roast. So what we're left with now nice piece of fillet all the way down there. So what I tend to do is feel the bone, just go on the the one side of the spine, again nice and gentle, and here is the price of second place in this race, it's called keeping your fingers. Go down so you can feel the ribs clanging away. found with doing this when they've come straight out of the chiller is you almost get them in frostbite on your fingers, it's not very nice. I don't know how butchers can do it all day. Alright so that's now peeling away from there. So that is actually separated now from that and this will here it come off with a nice tear. So that's our fillet. And then that silver skin on there, I'll show you how to remove that. It's a bit like taking the skin off a fillet of a salmon. We'll do that in a moment on a flat surface. So we're left now, I'll see there's a bit of meat there. Oh. So what I tend to do with that now then, Obviously with a munt jack, the fillets aren't very long. If that was a roe deer, it'd be about that long. And I tend to cut those up into three, six inch sections. So this one, I'm just gonna cut into half. So all I'm gonna do is just very lightly with the knife, just go through the meat down to the skin, turn the knife at 90 degrees, and then I'm just moving. Just gentle slidey movements like that. So there's no effort, it wasn't hard to do. And turn that over, and that's removed virtually all apart from a very thin there, bit there. But all of that sinew now has gone, so that's one piece done out of the way. Obviously, turn that around exactly the same again, just down so the blade is flat onto the skin. You can hold onto the skin, so it's just the same as doing a salmon fillet, exactly the same. Just a little bit of knife movement backwards and forwards. So that's the skin, that's probably what they would have made rope out of in the olden days. And there we go, so that's now all nice and clean. Um, there's a few tiny little bits on there, but I wouldn't get too overstressed about that. That goes in the bin. And then on with number two. So exactly the same again, that side's nice and straight, not worried about that. That one, I'm gonna cut that off to there. Again, that can go in the, the butcher's box. So again, if you look at that, it's, they're about the same, probably a little bit longer this one. Again, I'll go straight down the middle, just lightly down to the edge, 90 degrees. Get nice and slow. And there we go. 
You probably say, oh, that looks really easy. It, it is easy if you take your time. The first time you do it, you might knacker it up. Don't worry about that. There you go. So these little bits on that, you can spend ages with the knife just picking those out afterwards. But this will go now straight into a vacuum bag, um, and then that will go over to John's um, for, for cooking. So I'm sure she's going to come up with a nice recipe for that. But me personally, what I'll do with that is just salt, a lot of salt and pepper, butter in a hot frying pan, and then all four sides. So it will, it will cook as a, a square block. So I'm there for a minute, there for a minute, there for a minute, there for a minute, take it off, let it stand for a bit, and then nice diagonal slices. And it, honestly, that is the best fillet steak you'll ever eat. It's stunning. So that's that, that's as simple as that. The legs, as I say, what I always do with these, is you can clean all these bits of fat off, um, cut through, get rid of that tendon there, cut off the edge of that, cut clean that skin up, um, and that's that's all good to go. So there's a nice nice Sunday Sunday dinner there, or sit in a, in a slow cooker. So that's really all there is to do with venison. So I've, I've I've shot two or three now for people, and they've taken away uh, on the whole, and they're quite happy to do that. So. And I would expect what they've done is they've looked on, on YouTube and watched these hunting videos to see how exactly you go about preparing the meat. But um, don't cut through the skin with a saw because it won't knock it. So I'll just do that with a hacksaw later on. And that one's good to go. Same with this one, that's all clean. You can go there, that's it, tendon. And that's all there is to it. So thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you in John's kitchen okay. next. Well, hello and welcome back to the video. Well, you've seen me prepare the deer from the moment I've shot it to taking it to the butcher's room, skinning it, put it in the chiller, and then I took it back to the house and prepared it. I'm here now with John. Uh, she is a professional chef. She has got um, one of the legs of the venison here that um, I previously vacuum packed. So I'm gonna hand the reins over to John here. Uh, I am sat down because it's fair to say <laughs> she is vertically challenged um, as most young ladies from the Philippines yes, are. Yes. She is very, very small, but yeah. small things come in great packages True. and this is a great package. So Wonderful. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Yes. And I'm looking forward to this. And All I know right. Alex and Jan are looking forward okay. to testing out afterwards. Yes, of course. <laughs> All right. How, Uncle Smith, can you just quickly share, how did it get here? Okay, well, this, this is the haunch or the back leg of a Munt Jack deer, which is uh, an, not a native deer to the UK here. So unlike roe deer and the red stag, they don't have a season. So you can actually mm. shoot Munt Jacks all year round. Oh, wow. Obviously, if it's a female and it's got a youngster, you wouldn't. I wouldn't shoot that because it's it's not fair to the to the uh, the fawn or the mm -hmm. kid. Uh, so this one was a an adult male deer, mm -hmm. about two years old. You can tell that um, by the length of the horns on the head, and they also have quite long sort of Dracula type fangs at the front, which they use for fighting uh, when they're during the mating season. So this deer was shot on a local airfield and I've got permission to shoot them there because they do have a tendency and have run across in front of planes that are landing. So quite a dangerous thing uh, that they don't want to happen with, with the planes. So that's why this chap was shot. He was out in the middle of the airfield and I shot him, I think, about three weeks ago. All right. Alex and Jan are looking forward okay. to testing out afterwards. Yes, of course. All right. So welcome, everybody. What we're going to have is what we call a... Um, Venison teriyaki. So it's something that you, you normally see in teriyaki as an Asian dish, and most people do it for chicken, for beef, or for pork. And this is the first time, actually, I'm going to do this using the venison, okay? So we have one leg here, and the other one I've already um, sliced and chopped. So it's uh, thinly sliced. If you're going to do this, you need to have a, a beautiful knife, quite sharp, uh, to, to make it quicker when you do it. So I'm just going to slice it as well. The rest of the ingredients are simple recipes that you can get from groceries. We have soy sauce, we have oyster sauce, uh, sesame oil, uh, white vinegar, 
and roasted sesame seeds. I'm gonna pair this with, um, we're gonna mix it with um, a deer with a pear. Uh, two pears, so usually pear is, is really good mixed with meat because it helps with tenderizing it quicker. All the venison is very tender when you're going to uh, do it, so it helps with the sweetness as well. Try and find um, pear that is Asian rather than the regular you've seen here because the sweetness is slightly different. And then we have garlic, we have ginger, and we have spring onions, okay? So let me just quickly wash my hands to chop this uh, venison up. So. And they have a fresh, nice smell. See, that's tender the way that yeah. that's, that's just it's and it's if considering this is a, a leg, yeah, uh, it's it's really tender when you when you slice them. All the full muscle groups in that thigh that you've got, yeah, and separated them all up because mm. that, that is one particular type of steak. And you can see where the, the, the sinew is on there. You yeah. can actually, if you know which bit, you can actually tear that apart and end up with three, three lumps of different bits of muscle. Mm. So we just uh, finished um, slicing the uh, venison thinly sliced, like uh, really thinly sliced like that. Okay, and all we do with this is, this is two legs. Do you call it two legs? Both, both yeah, well, both yep. haunches, I call them. Yeah, okay. So, and we have a whole garlic, which we're going to, um, to mince it. Okay, we're going to mince it in this machine so it's quicker. If you don't have, obviously, if you don't have the machine, then you can just use um, your knife to chop it very uh, thinly. So what we do is um, thinly slice them. Don't worry about the 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 skin. Yeah. The skin of it. So we just do that. So it's finely chopped. Okay. So a whole lot because you want it to have loads of garlic. I'll just remove some of the skin, which is, it, this is one thing, if you have this machine, it's really good in, in slicing them thinly. The gingers do not remove the skin, just finely uh, mince it as well in, in your, using your knife. Okay. It's just make my life easy when I have this. So you have all that there. Okay, so with that, we're going to add, okay, I forgot. I'm going to add, I'm gonna change the cone. I'm using number one. I'm gonna change it to number two, where I'm going to have, um, going to shred the uh, peeled um, pear. Okay, make sure it's in. Okay, so you just peel that. Okay, so hmm, actually I have overestimated that. One is enough because they're quite big. Okay, so you have that shredded there and now we're going to marinate them, put the sauce, which is your um, soy sauce, 150 mils. We'll adjust it later if we need more of, of its taste. And then we have the oyster sauce, which is 100 mils. If you um, allergic to oyster sauce, you can replace it with, with uh, vegetarian uh, sauce. Okay, there's a, there's a vegetarian type of um, stir fry. They call it vegetarian stir fry sauce. We have the white vinegar, which is 100 mils as well. And 100 mils of, let's take that, that's uh, garlic skin, um, sesame oil. So mix them all together. One thing you can do with this is you can put it in a, in a sealed bag 
and leave it. Uh, you can just leave it in your um, fridge for you know a good five days. And if you wanted to cook, then obviously just get some because I've I've uh, done a batch here, which is two legs. So mixed it well, and then I'm going to put a little bit of the black pepper. That's a teaspoon. <laughs> okay, so add some more if you need to add more, but according to your taste, mix it like that. I'm going to be using the electric skillet from Salad Master, which is preheated um, at 230 degrees. Okay, so it's. Um, it's one way to, to do it. You can just put it in your stove top. If you don't have the electric, you can use any of your, of your salad master saucepan and you can put it in the hub um, or any type of saucepan that you may have. Okay, but I'm using this salad master. Okay, so all I do, I think this is many to be put in, so I'll just do half. Both of those legs, uh, once you've deboned it, you're probably looking at about four pounds of meat. Four pounds. Did you put three of the back fillets in there mm -hmm. as well? So yeah. Probably, in it as well. probably getting on to four and three quarter pounds of meat. So just over two kilos of meat, I would think. Okay. Just, I... just about enough for Alex and me yeah, to put in a sandwich. Probably. <laughs> probably. Okay. So we have that now. And we're going to add our butter for the taste. Okay, so um, do you also put that butter in there because there's absolutely no absolutely fat at all. no fat on this meat. There's no fat at all. So it's something that's just for the taste. You can just add some butter. Okay, that's about. 100 grams of, of um, butter, um, nice butter that you can have, uh, just add it there and all you do is slightly cover them, not fully covered because you, you don't want it to be, have a lot of sauce. So um, with that I would time it for 20 minutes, good 20 minutes, but from time to time we're going to mix them, okay? Just, just 20 minutes to do that. These we will add in there later. And we're going to have a mushy piece. Uh, there you go. Let me just, and I'm going to use um, Salad Master's um, new product this month of March. So we have our petite essential pan. Okay, so that is something. We, so there's nothing on it, and all I do is with a frozen piece, just put it in. Hello, piece. Okay, that's about 600 grams of piece. I'm gonna put a little bit of that spring onions with it, um, black pepper, just a little bit of the black pepper, a little bit of uh, salt, and cover it. Okay, so when you hear it clicking, I'm just going to turn it to low for three minutes, and then that's green pieces done, and then we're just going to mushed it to have it with our deer. Okay. 
Okay, two minutes is done. So your green piece looks green. Very nice. <laughs> yes, very nice and green. Okay, they look alive, they, they're not dead. Okay, so all you do now is get a, what do you call this? Masha. Masha. And then just mush it. Because it's already cooked. And just mush it. You don't want it to be super. So I'm just going to remove the, um, the meat now from there because we have a lot of, of uh, sauce and we would need that sauce for our mushy peas. So I want to keep them. left we'll switch it off okay can I take them off put it there okay let me just disconnect that and just make sure nothing left put it back I'll just put it back to 230 just so it's it's hot Okay, I preheated it back to 230 degrees and just so most of the sauce, okay? And all I do now is I'm gonna put some of that. Try that. Right, I need your Uncle Smith yep. to have a pinch of the meat if the taste is right um, or you need the what the this you know when they blur the face oh. <laughs> characters that is so tender yeah you think people probably watching I think oh you've overcooked that that's gonna yeah. be really tough no but honestly mm. you could eat that with no teeth it's that tender yeah but, um, gorgeous I think that's the biggest difference for having a meat um, like a beef mm. because when you overcook a beef it becomes very Streamy. chewy yeah, this one is not we've is, tried it last night and is, it's not yeah, at all it's amazing and the, the ginger is probably one of my most favorite sort of flavors anyway I'm, I'm always put ginger in so that's that gets a big thumbs up for me oyster sauce again yes um, obviously my wife coming from the same region as you do um, always have cooks the same as, as you do at home so mm -hmm. yeah. How's the taste though? Lovely. Yeah? Beautiful. You so, wouldn't know that that wasn't fillet steak. Mm -hmm. it, it, venison, if people have never eaten venison before, don't expect it to taste any different to, to a nice piece of steak that you've eaten. It doesn't look any different. It certainly doesn't taste any different. It hasn't got what people refer to as a gamey taste. Mm. It's, yeah. It's, you can see why venison can command a high price in a restaurant. Um, the wit, what is quite a very cheap commodity in the UK, and they're now having to sort of take steps as a, as a controlled culling of it, because it, deer have no um, natural enemies like they do in the States with sort of wild cats and bear and things, so you know, the, their only enemy is us walking around with a rifle. Okay. Now that is stunning. Thank you very much. Yes. Enjoy okay. that. So what the sauce that I add is just a, a mixture of soy sauce, oyster sauce, and some sesame oil. Once it's dry up, you just want the shiny appearance of it once it's dried up. Okay. Um, then sesame seeds. Sprinkle of your sesame seeds. Make sure you have spring onions.
and that's all ready to serve. I'm going to switch it off now. Okay. And over here is obviously your um, the, the green piece. Yeah, the sauce from the venison. You can have it with mashed potato. You can add that as well as, as a gravy. Or with this one, this one, this one. All I do is I'm just going to add that. Mix it with that just so the flavor from the meat. Okay, just mix it up. That's done. Now I need your Uncle Smith to be here. So you can have a taste of that. Mm. Yeah? I love peas as well. <laughs> you love, you love In fact, peas. There's not much I don't like, so I'm probably not the best person to be trying food out, but it's your your cooking genre is all normal. It's is lovely, fantastic. You feed a lot of people, a lot Thank of friends. You. Come here just to be fed, so, um, and I'm one of those people normally. <laughs> so, I can't wait for it all to, yeah. to, to come out. I'll put that in your sink. Or you can have it with Japanese rice, whatever rice you fancy. Not basmati. Not basmati. Not basmati. It's not going to work. go. Mm. That was great, isn't it? Is that the sort of thing that your, your mum and dad would eat? Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn up the light, yeah? Yep. Well, the lights got turned off prematurely there, but eight of us enjoyed that meal. Uh, as you could tell by Alex's face, he was in love with that food, and I also think he had a bit of a soft spot for the chef, John. Please get in contact with both Jan and John if you would like them to come to your house to completely free of charge to demonstrate the Salad Master range. They will cook you a three-course meal. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content of this video. And if you have, please click on the subscribe and the notification bell. That support is always greatly accepted from me. Thanks again. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.